Good Sunday morning. Welcome in to the Sports Source. Happy to have you with us on this Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to everyone out there. Uh, the old Sinatra joke. Happy Mother's, happy mother's Day to all you mothers out there. Um, <laughs> we have a, uh, a fun show. It's a different show. It's a special show. Special topics, special guests, and a special guest of honor. So let's just jump right into it. First segment, as always, brought to you by our friends at Nova Copy. Uh, for businesses all across the area, from Middlesbrough to McMinn County, from Crossville over to the Carolina line, Nova Copy will provide a completely free cost analysis of your company's workflow. And I can tell you this, they will figure out a way to save you money. I guarantee it. You see the number there? Check them out online as well, Nova Copy. All right, let me welcome in the guests and the guest of honor today. Jim Wogan, Six Sports Director. Wait a minute, I thought I was. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he told you just to get you out here. Yeah, that was, yeah, the, the lure of big money got you out here. Uh, Jim Wogan, of course, uh, announced recently that yeah. you will be walking away from the TV industry yeah. after 25 years. We thought it would be a great opportunity to eulogize you while you're still alive <laughs> and, uh, and discuss the biggest stories yeah. of the last 25 years. So we've asked you to help us com compile a list, and we'll discuss those. And I appreciate you doing that. Also here, of course, Bob Hodge, who's with us normally. He's the uh, uh, freelance contributor at Knoxville News Sentinel. We have John Wilkerson. Glad to have you here. We can occasionally drag you away from uh, sports talk in 99.1, 990, ball baseball. Glad to have you. And right there, I told him he's the special guest. <laughs> he, he, he's always the special guest for me, because, and he hates it when I say this. He's the reason I'm in television today. So send the hate mail to Gene Patterson. <laughs> Gene Patterson, longtime anchor here at WATE. Um, with you walking away, like, as I said, I thought it would no, be No, I'm fun. running, actually. Running away from I'm the running industry. running as fast as, as I can. Staying ahead of the posse. <laughs> That's it's, right. You're, you're Conzo Martining, aren't There's you? No <laughs> walking. There's no walking here. All right. Well, I thought it would be a great opportunity to talk about some of the most compelling stories out there. And you kind of came up with three eras. Mm -hmm. three, it's, it's kind of, with two of these, it's a rise and fall. With one of them, it's just a rise and a rise and a rise. Yeah. And that's where I want to start. Uh, the first one we're going to look at, there's really no downside unless you count a trip to Tuscaloosa last month. But it's the Peyton Manning era. And there you see it all the way back from his signing when he came in from, from uh, Newman High School down in New Orleans. Look how young he looked yeah. there in that, that second shot. And then, great player, but he became a hero, the patron state of Tennessee, with that press conference announcing he was staying. Uh, Jim, I'll let you start. You know, if you can define Tennessee sports for the past 25 years, you, you define it around Peyton Manning. I don't think there's any question about that. You can talk about all the other accomplishments in this town by other coaches and other players, but it begins and ends and with Peyton Manning. It, it really does. And I can remember... John, the first time in 94 when I went over on campus to interview him, and instantly I remember thinking, this kid gets it. He, he's, he's been schooled in this, yeah. he, he's, he's a smart kid, he's grown up around it, and this is going to be a unique four years. Now, clearly it's gone beyond four years, right. yeah. but the four years that he was here, um, the highs, the lows, I mean, they, they were just, they were so much more accentuated because of his presence here. And, um, you know, in, in many ways we've been accused of deifying him, but, but I don't think there's any getting around it. I mean, he, in every sense of the word, has defined what Tennessee athletics is about the past um, 25 years, I think. And you, you talk to coaches over there who never met Peyton, they're getting text messages from Peyton, yeah. almost um, acknowledging that their presence on campus now is, is okay. They've been cleared by Peyton, so everything's okay. Yeah. You know, it happened to Donnie Tindall a week or two ago. Do you guys agree that if you had to give it to one yeah. signature person over the last 25 years, it's I, Peyton? I've got a couple of stories about Peyton. One of them recently, I was talking to Congressman Jimmy Duncan, and there was an article in the paper a few years back where he actually passed his father uh, in time in Congress, and there was a big story in the paper. Well, out of the blue, Peyton Manning, since Congressman Duncan, who he, he's met oh, but doesn't yeah. know well, uh, a note saying, you know, it sounds to me like your relationship with your father was a lot like my relationship with my father. So it was just one of those kind of little personal notes that a guy like Peyton does. The other thing for me, the lasting impact for me, is that I no longer hold the Heisman Trophy in any kind of sense of credibility. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, we've got, I'm we've, absolutely serious. We've actually got that coming up a little bit later. Okay, well, we'll we've got that, that later on. in the show. <laughs> Guys, thoughts on Peyton Manning? 
Well, just you talk about dominating. Tennessee football was never really at a higher high because it was at the end of the Manning era that they win the national championship. You, you can make a really good case that the guys that were here to win the, that championship came here mm -hmm. to play with Peyton Manning and they saw Tennessee on television. That's why they wound up here, yeah. I mean, that is the highest high for Tennessee football for just about everybody that is now a Tennessee football fan. There are some longtime football fans that can remember back to the 50s, but at the same time, for the greatest majority of Tennessee football fans, Peyton in that era in the mid to late 90s is it. St. Peyton? Uh, I think the big thing Peyton did was he gave a lot of kids their first names. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are other UT and players, and, I think, and, who have had more children. And, and, and not, but, as, not in the style of Travis Henry. Yeah. <laughs> You actually went farther with it than uh, I was going to go. They're thinking it. But, I mean, in 50 years, people are going to come to East Tennessee and go, why are all these people named Peyton? All yeah, these old right. women, old men yeah. are named Peyton. I've never seen anything. That, well, I take that back. There's only one instance where I can compare this Peyton Manning, that I can compare Peyton Manning's uh, love affair with Tennessee to, and that's Archie Manning at Ole Miss. That's the only mm -hmm. thing I – where on that campus, the, the speed limit is still 18 miles an hour because he wore the jersey number 18. I, it's amazing to me that you have two guys in the same family who have become so synonymous with their program and are so beloved. And maybe, in Peyton's case, it shows just how well Archie passed that on, as, as you said, about him getting it. Yeah, Tennessee football existed before Peyton Manning. Yeah. It's certainly gone on after Peyton Manning. But there's there's nothing like that four years. I, I don't you know I don't go back that far, but I go back far <laughs> enough that that um, it would be hard to define, at least in the modern era of Tennessee football, uh, an era that stood out as much. And as you mentioned, um, even the national championship season was built on the fact that there were players that were that were here because Peyton was here. The moment that changed it all. I mean, you think about it. If Heath Schuler had stood up after his junior year and said, I'm coming back, you probably have a lot of people named Heath around here. But that was the thing. Schuler had left, and I think Tennessee fans were planning for the worst. There's no way this great guy stays, and then he comes back and stays. As someone covering that one, what was your take when he made that announcement? Did you have any idea it was coming, or were you as shocked as everybody else? Uh, I was as shocked as everybody else, and, and we were. I remember uh, vividly the day we covered it, and we carried it live, and we were ready for both eventualities. I mean, we were ready for both possibilities, graphically, uh, content-wise. Um, it, it's amazing um, that that secret was as well kept, or that decision was uh, was kept under wraps as well as it was, because. Everybody was wondering. Everybody wanted the story, and, and yet nobody had, had a firm grip on what was going to happen until he announced. And I think up until the moment he announced, nobody was quite sure. Everybody was hoping, but well, you, nobody was sure. I think you could tell that from the reaction in the room. Yeah. And anybody yeah. that remembers that remembers that the audible gasp and then the cheers, which you don't normally hear from media people. Now, there were other people in the room, but I'd, I'd say there were some media folks who kind of were impressed by that. Does anybody else remember, though? That Peyton Manning won deified quite as early as a lot of people. Well, because good point. Brandon yeah. Stewart. Brandon, Brandon Stewart. Stewart. Yep. A lot of people set up in the stands and were sitting there. They would have rather had Stewart. And why did they want Stewart? Because he reminded run. them of Heshu. Yep. Yeah, he, he could ran run the ball. I, I, I will be the first to admit I was a Stewart guy early on. <laughs> I mean, I really, I really was. So. Well, and the way that played out in '94 in that first game of the season at UCLA, I mean. There was clearly the plan wasn't to play either one of those guys. It was going to be Jerry Colquitt's game, and then it became Todd Helton's game. But but uh, Brandon Stewart and, and Peyton were thrown into the mix, and and that's when the great debate started raging. Yep. You know, and, and you saw Brandon Stewart take off with the football a few times, and he made some through the course of the early part of that season. He made some plays, mm. and and there was a lot of debate. So you're you're absolutely right. He wasn't quite deified as early as. We like to believe. John, I've let you do this on the show. You're, you're on like once every two or three years, and I always <laughs> call on you. You've got a great theory or a, an alternate reality of what could have happened. Well, but if, if, if Brandon Stewart does not leave the University of Tennessee, you wonder if they ever win the national championship because if Stewart is still here, then T. Martin probably does not come here. He was choosing between Tennessee and Auburn. He chooses Tennessee, so he's here. Peyton becomes the man, and he gets to grow into being the sophomore junior and senior leader that he was and then Brandon Stewart goes to 
Texas A&M, yeah. and, he, and that wouldn't have knocks happened. off Kansas State in the Big 12 championship game. So he was where he needed to be for Tennessee fans, and that was to knock out the guy that the the, the team that Sagarin had as the number one team in the power rankings, even after they lost. I'm getting chills. But the, 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 you know, the, the, real quickly, the the one thing that I think makes Peyton such a compelling story and a compelling figure in Tennessee sports history is it wasn't just all good. That there was there was a um, there was a an element of disappointment there in 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 some of the games that he played, the performances that he didn't quite live up to the expectation, perhaps it, the the Heisman thing, yeah. and then he, th- th- despite all those disappointments, he endured, and and his legacy endures, and and I, I, you you think about his last game as a volunteer was against Nebraska down right. in the Orange Bowl. That was a that was a terrible game yeah. 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 for Tennessee football overall and, and I think it was those those great highs when he was playing and those lows that makes him such a compelling figure from a, a, a media point of view somebody who can assess history and look at history and judge him not just for the way he played but the character and the enduring fashion for which he carried himself even through some of that disappointment very good. We're already 15 minutes over. Uh, the good news is if you're going to go 15 minutes over in this town, make it about Peyton Manning, who, by the way, as you'll see in just a second, really liked Jim Wogan's hair. Come on back and on the Sports Horse, and we're going to talk about the Philip Fulmer era. Come on back. But really all I want to talk about is I've been gone for eight years, but Jim Wogan's hair looks still good after all this time. It's fascinating. And, and-